Today we're gonna to be breaking down all five retro variations of the Military Blue Air Jordan 4s. We had 2006, 2009, 2012, 2021, and current day 2024. They may look the same, but trust me, there is differences in every single one of these models. When it comes to the shapes, cuts, materials, purposes, you name it, every single one of these pair of shoes are unique in its own way. But before we start breaking down all these shoes, you know we gotta talk about the history first. Back in 1989, we saw the Air Jordan 4 release in four different colors. Colorways. We had the white cement fours, the black cement fours, the fire red fours, and last but not least, which some people might actually say least, <laughs> the military blue fours. Now during this time, we saw a lot of iconic moments when it comes to Michael Jordan and his performance on the basketball court and everything that he had done from the shot in the playoffs or seeing him during the all-star game, commercials, or any other iconic moments that people can name. But every time we saw Mike wearing the Jordan fours, we never saw him wearing the military fours, which is understandable because he played for the Bulls and those were his team colors. But typically Michael Jordan would always go out the country, maybe to Paris or different places around the world or different basketball tournaments and he would wear his alternate colorway sneakers. I had been digging around all throughout the internet and I have still yet to find Michael Jordan wearing the military blue fours. So it kind of makes me wonder, did he even like this shoe? Let me know down below in the comment section if you guys have a photo of Mike rocking the military fours and it's not a photoshopped image. I would love to see it and I would definitely repost that on my Instagram. Oh yeah, and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ, and this is the DNA Show. Hey! But either way, hopefully this helps you guys understand a little bit about the history of the shoe and why the Jordan 4 model is so important. And then obviously this is an original colorway, so it causes sneakerheads in current time to still love this shoe. And I'm sure there's a bunch of OG collectors out there that had this shoe back in the day, or young kids, or whoever it may have been. I was born after these had released, so I didn't have them when they originally came out. But I can say one thing, this pair from 2006, oh my gosh, I wore these all the time back in high school. And these were my high school colors. So I'm sure everybody knows the military Fours released about a month ago and they are the first version to have the Nike Air on them and the first version to resemble the OG cut from the original pair of 1989. Now unfortunately I don't have the 89 pair in my collection but we have a bunch of images that will be able to pop up when we show these comparisons and I've already done a review on these individually in the past so if you guys want to check that out make sure you do but don't worry I'm going to break down each shoe individually and then show you guys them compared side by side so you guys can see the differences between the generations and the cuts and the eras and the material. So kick Taking it all the way back to 2006, the first Air Jordan 4 military blue to release as a retro. As you guys can see, a lot of differences when it comes to the styles, cuts, and materials. So I wanna show you guys these two shoes side by side because I think this is gonna be the new golden standard when it comes to Jordan 4s and especially the Military 4 in particular. Looking at the outsoles, as you guys can see, there is definitely a difference when it comes to the Jumpman and the Nike branding because what? If you have a Jumpman on the back, you have to have the Jumpman on the bottom and then you have your Nike branding, you're gonna have your Nike branding on the back. Now when it comes to the blues, it's gonna be a little bit different and then obviously this pair is worn so it's gonna be a little bit darker and dirtier. But you can see the military blues on the 2006 retro, the blue is a lot darker here, more of a navy kind of vibe. Now on the front end of the two shoes, you're gonna have your gray stars with your gray heel on the back end, and then your center of the foot is gonna be all white rubber with that hair and bone traction. Now one thing when it comes to the Air Jordan 4s back in the day, and this was all the Air Jordan 4s back in the day when it comes to that you know, 2006, 2008 era, all the 4s had the stars on the front, but they were a lot more faint and not as raised and as textured as you would say compared to the new modern day retros that we see now going up to the midsoles on these two shoes you can see everything's going to be similar when it comes to the colors and the patterns but the difference is the blue. You have a lot more of a vibrant, more of a royal type blue here on the 2006 pair with the white underneath that. And then you have a white air unit inside of the sneaker. Now when it comes to the new pair, the military blue is a lot more faint, a little bit more dull, and it has more of a darker, less vibrant tone when it comes to the blue. Now when it comes to the mud guard on the front end around the toe, and then overall the shape of the shoe, you can see clearly a huge difference there. The material on the 2006 pair is gonna be a little bit of a dark darker color just very slightly and it's going to be less high of a cut as well because again the shape is different and when you put it side by side with these on a new pair you can tell that the gray is a lot more faint here on the 24 retro now when it comes to the upper and the materials on this this is going to be something that we're going to talk about compared to the 2012 pair in particular because everybody saw that as the new standard from then to now and the material on those the leather is more of a pure white but on this 2006 pair it's more of like a sail kind of faint grayish kind of color 
color to it. I would say more, just more of a creamy, if anything. And then on the 2024 pair, a lot of people say this pair is a lot more of a gray or a blue tint. So with the two shoes side by side, you can definitely see there's a difference when it comes to the shade, especially right here on the toe box area. And then the rest of the elements on the shoe, everything's gonna be pretty similar. Obviously, I'm gonna have a little bit of yellowing, but either way, you have your gray arms with your blue eye stays here on the front and the top end, and that's gonna be the same thing here. And then you'll see those same elements here when it comes to the mesh and the nets. Again, the blues are gonna be a little bit different, but overall, same thing, blue mesh with the white net on front of that. And then again, when it comes to the nets and the placement of the nets and the size of the nets, it's gonna be different. This is gonna be more square and flat on the 2006 pair and you're gonna have vertical nets which a lot of sneakerheads think the shoes are fake because the nets are vertical yada yada whoop de whoop but really they just didn't know during this time and era they were making the nets more vertical and on the new modern day retros you see it has more of a diagonal look to it similar to the og from 89. we didn't really see a change up in the nets until the remastered series when we saw the white cement air jordan fours and that was around 2015 2016. now these come standard with a pair of all white flat laces again the laces have a little bit difference when it comes to the texture on them but either way very similar now when it comes to the tongue the blue color on these two pretty similar I would say it's a lot more royal on the 2006 pair and you can also see more texture in the Jumpman because of the stitch pattern and again technology upgrades different things sewing machines I could understand why the patch looks better on the 2024 retro saying that it's been almost 20 years in differences just between 2006 and 2024 now when it comes to the tongues on the backside and the puff this one's a lot more thin and less padded on the 2006 pair and this one's more similar to a lot of people say like the SB fours different things like that a lot more thick has a lot more cushioning on there some people like this style some people like this style let me know what you think down below in the comment section now one thing that's a huge element to the Jordan 4 tongue that I've noticed over the years as typically if you look at the shoe from the front you can see on the older retros you can actually still see that blue color but when you look at the new style which is similar to the OG cut you can only see the white leather and it's folded back and then if you turn it around then you can see the color and this is gonna be the same thing on your reimagined fours or other fours like the lightnings the thunders you name it all the new modern day retro now behind the tongue classic like every Air Jordan 4 you have your upside down pattern all white with the Air Jordan branding with the black text if you flip it down forward you can see it in the correct direction they say people used to rock it like this back in the day we saw it on the Union Force either way I don't really like it that way I prefer it just rocking it up like this so that's just me you're gonna have an all gray collar and a royal blue sock liner with a white Jumpman here on the 2006 pair and then on these you're gonna have the same thing that blue color with the white text on the Nike Air instead of the Jumpman because what? Nike on the back, Nike on the bottom, Nike on the insole. And then the obvious thing you can tell right here, you have a Jumpman on the back on the 2006 pair and then a Nike Air here on the 24 retro. Now before we take it to the next shoe and show you guys the comparisons, I wanna show you guys the box as well because the box represent different eras. So when you look at these two boxes, you can see right here from the lids, you still have your Jumpman branding, but clearly two different boxes. So this one's gonna be more of your OG style Air Jordan 4 box from back in 1989. You gotta have your Nike Air branding, the lift off lid with the cement print all throughout the side of the box. And then on this one, oh my gosh, it just brings up so many memories during this time. We call this the Silver Box era. And as you guys can see, my box is a little dusty. I can write my name in the lid, but that's okay. I've had these for a while. <laughs> a lot of people's collection looks like this over the years. All gray with the silver jump man. You have that silver liner around the side and the front end of the box. And then you have your Jordan branding here with the circles. And then the same thing, Jordan and branding with the circles with the silver text on the side of the box there and then on the front end you're gonna have your label classic Air Jordan 4 retro off-white military blue neutral gray retail 115 bucks man what a time crazy to think about that because the 2024 retro 215 bucks but I get it I know inflation it was almost 20 years in between these two releases but double the price come on man all right next up the moment you guys have all been waiting for the Air Jordan 4 fusion military blue so what exactly does this mean and if you've never seen this before today's your chance to look at them so starting with the box right here you have your air jordan box 
but this is kind of similar to an Air Force One, like a premium Air Force One box at the same time because you got the slide out sleeve. Like we talked about during this time, we had the silver box era. So what did they do? Similar style when it comes to coloring and the patterning, but then they also did an incorporation with the Air Force One. So we see the dark gray with the silver Jumpman. And then on the sides, you have these like little circles that you see this come in kind of radiating out throughout the center of the box. This is gonna be what? Similar to the bottom of the outsole on the Air Force One. Now when it comes to the front end of the box, you can see it's all silver right here. And then you have this embossed logo, which is similar to the Dubrays that we see on the Air Force Ones. You're gonna have a Jumpman logo on the left and an Air Force One AF1 here on the right side inside of that square. Looking at the size tag, it reads AJF4, off-white, military blue, neutral gray, same coloring, and retail is 140 bucks. So so remember, this is around the same time, 2006 to 2009, a few years later, retail price increased $30 because of this collaboration or whatever you want to call it. People, at this time, people called it a collab. Like that's what they thought. It was like Jordans and Forces are collabing to create this model. It wasn't like an off-white type thing. It was like, this is a brand collab. Like that's what people called it. At least the people that I knew. Now this is the part that everybody loved about the shoe and the packaging. You peel out this lid right here and you can see you have your window where you can actually see the shoes. And then on there, you have this little lift off lid. And this is actually funny because during this time, we were getting like, we had the DMP pack, which came similar packaging like this. And then we had the CDP pack, which is a little bit different. But then later, during the same time and era, we saw the Space Jams, the Concords, those type of releases. They came with this type of packaging. But for some reason, I feel like we saw the Fusions first when it came to this type of packaging. Correct me if I'm wrong, let me know down below in the comment section. But this was like a dope element when it comes to just purchasing this shoe. I'm just trying to help walk you guys through the experience of owning these back in the day because I ain't gonna lie, I had some pairs back in the day. You have some text right here on the bottom half in black and it says Air Jordan 1, Air Force 1, the ultimate collaboration, see, a collaboration, a rare opportunity to see two titans as the best of both worlds unite as one. And then it goes on to explain the 25th anniversary of the Air Force 1 and the 23rd anniversary of Air Jordans, which was then the Jordan 23 came out. So there was definitely a lot of hype and conversation when it comes to the Fusion models during this time and era. Now this was the next part that everybody loved, was peeling this lid off and then seeing the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. So this one in particular, there's a lot of differences between the 2024 retro. So I'm gonna show you guys the model first and break this down. And then we'll talk about a couple key elements that I saw major changes in. Looking at the outsole, Air Force One bottom compared to the Jordan 4 bottom. You got your all white with the gray on the front end around the toes and then you have your blue pods here on the front and back end with your Nike branding in the center of the foot. You have a translucent midsole with the blue behind that showing the air unit similar to the Air Jordan 4 and then you have your air branding classic to the Air Force One and a translucent text right there. Now just above that connecting the midsole to the upper you're going to have an all blue stitch which is different from the Air Jordan 4 because we typically see a white stitch around the toe and then going to the upper definitely a mixture of two different models here as well. We can see the four elements with the force more in the front half of the shoe. So I like how they did this and went about it. Now looking at the mud guard in the vamp area, the neutral gray that we saw here, same thing. You have that thinner nubuck type material all throughout this front area. And it's not too dominant with the color of gray. And then on the top right here on the vamp, you're gonna have your Air Force One toe box. So you're gonna have all white right there with the perforated dot. And then going to the back half of the shoe, this is gonna look a lot more similar to the Air Jordan 4, except for the nets and mesh, which we'll show you guys side by side with the 24 retro. So on the back half right here, you can see you have more of that kind of like pure white type color, kind of off-white. It says off-white on the box as well. You have your gray arms with the blue eye stage right here on the top and bottom. And then on the back end, you have your classic Jordan 4 tab with the white stitch around it and then the white Jumpman in the center. Now these come standard with a pair of all-white laces and like we talked about on the front end of the box, same thing here on the Dubray. You have your Air Jordan Jumpman with the Air Force One logo here side by side and that's gonna be the same thing on both, kind of laser ingrained into there. Looks like a leather like material and then behind that typically on the Jordan 4 what do we see mesh in the nets behind the laces these ones in particular more similar to the Air Force 1 but then when it comes to the top half of the tongue this is going to be similar to what your Air Jordan 4 now again during this time like we talked about the cuts and eras you're going to see your blue on the front end here it's going to be a thinner tongue and then on the back end instead of saying Air Jordan with the upside down text you have a white tab but then it's blue text 
and it says the best of both worlds and it's going to be of kind of like this cursive like font now this pair is worn so i don't remember what it had on the insoles whether it was a nike air branding or a jumpman but either way you have your all royal sock liner same thing matching with the tongue and then your gray collar all around that area similar to the jordan 4. so clearly you can see the elements of the air force one and the jordan 4 mesh together into this model and again a collaboration from the two brands which is crazy to think right we think about collabs now and 20 years ago two different types of collabs and don't get me wrong we saw collabs like the undefeated force back during that time as well so i understand now here we go the moment of truth <laughs> Okay, maybe should I compare these to the 2006 retro because I feel like you guys can clearly see the differences between it's the new cut So I think this kind of more of a representation of 2006. Let's go back to 2006. All right, this is better I feel like this is a you know a nicer representation because the boxes are similar when it comes to the coloring We have the same elements the years are close to each other. So looking at these two shoes I think the biggest thing I noticed was the nets and how large it was on the side panel. Typically, you have a Nike swoosh that goes on the side of the foot of the Air Force One. They eliminated that and kept the mesh, but this thing is huge compared to the typical nets that we see. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still pretty big on these, but just going all the way to the front right here and not having that leather piece that wraps around and goes down in front of the ice day area, just kind of throws me off a little bit, but I get it. I understand where they were going still, you know, respecting the elements of the Air Force One at the same time. And then another thing, if you look on the side right here, you can see you have that neutral gray nubuck and it goes all the way up to the eye stay area and touches right here compared to this one runs right in front of it. And then you have a white piece of leather and then you have this one sitting on top of another piece of leather as well. So again, kind of like three or four elements here. And this is more just straight up, but it right to it. And then like I was talking about earlier, another thing that I I noticed that really stood out they added the mesh on the sides but not throughout the tongue another thing that i had noticed when it come to these two shoes as well was they had the similar back tabs but remember i said the white stitch these have white stitch on this area and you can see this has more of a blue stitch that matches directly with that same blue tab so again another subtle detail that a lot of people don't really notice but i just wanted to point that out for you guys and speaking of other details the jordan 4 is known for having the black flight text below the Jumpman logo. And as you can see, black here on the 2006, but on the 2009 Air Force One collab, you see it's an all blue text. So again, another slight detail switch up when it comes to the 2009 retro. All right, here we go. On to everybody's favorite part. Cause for some reason, people did not like the 2012 retro. Everybody was hating on it. It sat on shelves, they came out. Mind you, when the 2012 retro came out, the Yeezy 2s were releasing at the same time, the Solars and the Plats. And I'm sure you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with the Jordan 4s? Because it came out on the same day. And I remember vividly camping out, going to the raffles, doing everything for the Yeezy 2s. And I'm like, damn, I'm gonna miss out on the military 4s. Everybody's gonna cop those. Bruh, literally went to the camp out, did all this stuff, go to the mall, 4s are sitting. Every size, nobody copped them, easy cop, no problem. Like, it's crazy to think about that time, that era, and I remember vividly when these came out during this time, and I added some to my collection. I definitely copped a few pairs. I'm just saying this to help paint the picture for you guys of what was happening then, and then all the Jordan 4 hype I would say in the past few years because we see it dying down a little bit right now. So the first thing I wanna do is compare these to the 2006 retro because I think that Collectors during this time and era of 2006 to then seeing the 2012 retro, they were very happy with the 2006 pair and wanted to see those come out again as the same way. People just were not liking the materials, the cuts, how the shoes were, the colors, the vibrancy, all those different things. And they were just so accustomed to this style. You gotta remember, you had Lightning, Thunders, Miss Fours. There were so many great models that were releasing during this time that caused a lot of sneakerheads to not really like the 2012 retro. At least, that's what I heard from people in my circle. So looking at the outsoles, not too much to say here besides the color of the blues are a little bit different. And then the stars, remember we talked about the stars and how they switched that up. The stars on the 2012 retro are a lot more prominent. They stick out, they have a lot more texture. We saw Jordan 4s, SBs, different things during this time and era. 
the stars were there, but they were definitely a lot more faint. Now going up to the midsoles right here, again, you can see a huge difference on the two midsoles when it comes to the color of blue and then the overall kind of texture and height and everything. It's just a little bit different when you see them side by side. Another big difference that stood out between the 2012 and the 2006, you actually had a blue air unit inside of these compared to the white air unit that we were accustomed to seeing on the 2006. Now when it comes to the upper on these two shoes, I want to read the size tag on the box so you guys can understand where I'm coming from. The 2012 retro states Air Jordan 4 retro white instead of off white and then it says military blue neutral gray and I want to say retail on these was like a hundred and 80 bucks or 160 I think it was 160 bucks back then I don't remember let me know down below in the comment section I want to say it was 160 bucks notice it said white instead of off-white so what we see more of a pure white on the leather on the upper and then you're gonna have that same neutral gray elements here on the front end around the mud guard area new buck type material and feel and everything similar I can't really complain about that I feel like it's a little bit darker on the 2006 compared to the 2012. And then obviously the leather, side panels, everything like that, pure white, off-white, kind of more of a creamy look here on the 2006. Now every other element of the shoe, it's identical, like color blocking and colors and everything like that. They didn't switch anything when it comes to stitching or anything like that. But the shape of the two shoes is a lot different on these models. You can see that the toe is a little bit more boxy on the 2012. It's a little bit higher cut here around the back end. The nets and mesh are kind of similar. But if you guys remember when we did the Air Jordan 4, the bread colorway, look at the tabs on the front end of the 2012 pair. Remember the little triangles that we see right here on the 2006, the OG, different things like that? They actually eliminated that on the 2012 pair. So this is a subtle difference that can also help you identify identify whether the shoe is real or fake or all those other elements but again a key switch up during the Jordan 4s in this era which made me forget to mention if you look at the Air Force 1 they eliminated the triangles here so low key this might have been the first shoe that eliminated the triangles when it comes to Jordan 4s and then we saw the actual Jordan 4s years later eliminating the triangles there on these tabs. I didn't really realize that until now but this low key could have been the start of it all. Now again these come standard with a pair of all white laces. You got your white tongue with the leather. You got your white patch with the blue jump man and the black text. Similar again here. They stayed consistent with the tongues. You can see the blue color from the front right here. Same thing on the 2012. Behind it, white patch with the black text. And then on the sock liner, you have your all blue with the white jump man and then the gray collar right here on the inside. And then like we talked about earlier, same thing here. Back tabs are gonna be I not identical, similar. One thing that I can say is when you look at the 2006 pair, it's a lot more translucent or it looks a little bit thinner, if that makes sense. So if I'm looking at it from my angle, I can see these square pods from the front all the way reflecting through it. Now, when I look at this one, it's a lot thicker, and these are the ones that will just tear up your Achilles. Like, everybody did not like these because of that as well. When you wear these, <laughs> it is not comfortable. But either way, when I look at it this way, I can't see the square pods on the front end like I could because it's not really translucent as much as this pair is. Now I'm gonna take the 2006 pair away and I'm gonna bring back the 2024 pair here and show you guys because I think this was a comparison that a lot of people wanted to see and I didn't get to do it as much in the previous review. So let's start with the box because these boxes are different. So when I look at these two boxes, it's just turning around this way, but the lids look the same. All black, red, jump man, white flight, I get that. Okay, cool. You got your cement print all throughout the box. All right, cool. Now this is the big thing that I loved about the new retros that we're seeing. You have your Nike Air branding here on the front end of the box and on the back end of the box when it comes to the lid. These retros didn't feature Nike Air on the back end of the shoe or the bottom of the shoe or the inside of the shoe. So what? They have the jump man with the air here on the front and the back end of the lid. Subtle details when it comes to the packaging as well just alone when it comes to these two models. So now looking at the two outsoles on here, same when it comes to the color patterns, the blues are gonna be a little bit different, but a big elephant in the room, everybody understands. Now at this point, Nike on the bottom compared to Jumpman on the bottom results into what? 
Nike on the tab, Jumpman on the tab, Nike on the insole, Jumpman on the insole. So a huge thing that a lot of collectors have wanted to see and something that we have not seen since 1989. It's been a long time and we finally got the shoe here. And honestly, I'm so happy about that element of the sneaker. Now again, like we talked about in 2015, 16, during this time, we saw the remastered Air Jordan 4s start to hit the scene. So they started to change the shape and the cuts and the materials and everything compared to the 2012 style, the Toro Bravo 4s, the Green Glow 4s, you name it. There were so many different 4s coming out during this time. They changed that to the remastered style. And then from there, we saw the reimagined style or whatever you wanna consider it. This is the new style that we're getting now. So there was another element of fours in between, but we didn't see a military, so it's kind of hard for me to show you guys. But either way, there have been evolutions in the cuts and materials over the years. So when you look at these two shoes side by side, you can see the blues, obviously, very different yet again. And then on the neutral gray right here on the front end, you can see that it's a lot higher of a cut with the OG style here on the 24 retro, lower, slimmer, but not as slim as the 2006 retro. And then you're gonna have your more of a pure white compared to that off-white or what was the color that they call this one? Off-white military blue. Yeah, so they, they went back to off-white here on the 2024 retro. Now, when you see the two shoes side by side and the images flicking back and forth and different things like that, you can notice clearly the shapes and the cuts of the two shoes are way different and you understand that. So some key things that I wanted to point out between these two shoes is going to be what? The hang tags, as you can see, you have your Air Jordan, your harder, thicker plastic with your clear around the orange tab. And then on these, it's gonna be more similar to your OG style, thinner with the translucent Nike Air branding. And that also made me just think about it. The 2006 pair, I forgot to mention because this is like the best part or one of the best parts at least. The 2006 pair came with the retro card. Come on now. I don't know if you guys seen this ad before, this poster, whatever you wanna consider it, but it's crazy. Like you got the dude rocking the fire red threes, the black cement threes, the white cement threes, people guarding him in the different Nikes and he's just dunking over everybody. The retro card was a huge thing back in the 2006 era. We didn't see that in 2012, and a lot of people wanted to see the retro card in 2012, but we did get a hang tag, which was kind of similar to the OG, so I like that element as well, but for me, I'm like, yo, when we get to 2024, we need the retro card, we need the OG hang tag, we need everything to come along with it. We got the hang tag, but we still didn't get the retro card. And honestly, at this point, I don't know if the retro cards will ever come back out again. And if they were to do it, they would have to do different retro cards. So let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comment section. I was doing a quick search on eBay the other day just to see like how much are retro cards work. I was seeing prices from like $5 to $100. That's crazy. For a retro card, would you pay 100 bucks for one of these? So the last thing I wanna talk about when it comes to the 2012 versus 2024, look at the tongues. Again, we talked about this earlier. You have a way different tongue, the fold back. Everything is gonna be different compared to the 24 here. You can only see the white leather and then the blue is gonna be behind that still. Again, different color. But these ones, way different, more similar to the 2006 retro. And I honestly, personally don't mind this style of tongue, just because I'm so used to it from all the years. It's not as thick, it's, it's a little bit more flimsy. It kind of molds to the foot a little bit better. It feels a little bit more comfortable. Let me know what you guys think. Also, I almost forgot, if you notice the air unit right here, you can see this one is a blue air unit and all the other shoes come with a white air unit. So the 2012 pair is the only one that comes with a blue air unit. Okay, I take that back. The Fusion Air Force One also has a blue air unit, but these are just foggy. All right. Next Next up right here, we have the Air Jordan 4 Military Blue Golf. So looking at the box, we saw a lot of the golf spikes come this way. It was the all black box, the gold jump man. This was during the era of like terrible boxes. For some reason, like all the retros, I don't remember what years it was when it started, but this was the worst box era. There was no character. They looked terrible. They looked cheap. Like they did it for a long time. It might've been even before 2015. Either way, let me know what you guys think because <laughs> I thought these were some of the worst boxes. Now looking at the size tag, it reads Air Jordan 4 and the four is in Roman numerals this time. And then it says G for golf and it says white military blue. And then there's no neutral gray branding on there. Size 13, 
just for me. And retail on these was $220. Again, retail price points getting up there. And mind you, the 2024 retro retail was 215, but this is a golf bottom. They had to switch some things up. They did some work on the shoe. So pulling the lid back right here, you have your Nike Golf your little card right here. This, this is not a retro card, but <laughs> this comes with all the Nike golf shoes uh, that you see, especially with the Jordans. Now on the paper, it's gonna be all white with your gold 23 branding all throughout. Now peeling back the paper, you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. So starting with the bottom of these, you have a translucent Air Jordan 4 outsole, and then you have your Jumpman branding, which means what? Jumpman on the back, Jumpman on the inside. Now going up to the midsole and air unit, you can see they actually didn't do the rubber like we typically see with that textured rubber it's kind of like more of a smooth like polyurethane that just goes all the way throughout even the front end of the shoe let me know down below in the comment section because i'm pretty sure this is a polyurethane all throughout this area and then you have your blue pods and your white on the bottom half and then on the air unit it looks more of like a gray i can't tell from this lighting but i feel like this is gray not white now going to the upper the materials on the leather and then this new buck it feels like a lot more durable if that makes sense. More built for the water and the elements and the things like that. So the cuts and the shapes don't look too much different compared to the 2012 pair. I'm gonna put them side by side so you guys can see. It just feels like it's changed a little bit, but not too much. And then the materials are just, I don't know if you wanna consider nicer. Now when it comes to the mesh and nets on these, this is something that I saw immediately when I first opened these out the box back in the day. The, it's like this like waterproof, mesh compared to like the typical mesh built for the element now like we talked about earlier when it comes to the little tabs on the front end right here you can see there's no triangles on this area of the sneaker as well so 2009 2012 and 2021 those retros all came with these tabs and these are the ones that sneakerheads don't really prefer because it's not like the og now these come standard with a pair of all white laces you have your same thing here on the text on the tab everything is going to be the same your blue jump man with the black text white tab this leather though honestly the leather on the tongue on these is the best leather that i've seen out of all the versions now looking from the front on the tongue you can see that blue on the back end obviously it's all there and then you have your air jordan branding all black text with the white tab and then on the back tabs all blue tab with the white text so i'm gonna put these next to the 2012 pair just so you guys can see kind of the colors and the shade differences when it comes to the blues and the stances on the two sneakers now a big thing that I noticed on these, you have like that little nipple that's on the nets when it comes to the Jordan 4s. During this time and era of these new models coming out, we started to see this more and more compared to that flat, more vertical style. There's more of like a little nipple throughout every single part of it. It's more of a diagonal net throughout that area as well. And that's gonna be more similar to the 2024 pair. As you can see, you got those same little nipples right here all throughout that area. Now, when it comes to the golf spike in particular, if you're looking at the insoles on these, you're gonna have your all blue sock liners and you're gonna have a white jump man, but it says golf in white below as well. Now this is again, makes sense as a golf spike, but also different compared to the other version. So that's gonna do it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this and we went over as many details as possible. There's so many differences between the cuts, the materials and the small details and colors over the years. And I wanted to break this down and show you guys every single element for those new collectors or the old collectors that just wanna reminisce and see the differences or may not have known something or whatever it may be. So if you guys have any other additional tips or any other breakdown history videos that you want to see of OG models or potentially other retro colorways depending on how many other variations there are let me know down below in the comment section I would love to get that to you guys soon I have a ton of sneakers in my collection and it's always fun making videos like this and if you made it this far into the video and have not subscribed yet go ahead and hit the subscribe button bruh I feel like you had to enjoy something in the video all right you guys I'll see you in another one and I have some more videos tagged at the end of this one for you guys to check out next I would never let you down. Yo, if you made it to the end of this video and want to take your collection to the next level, I built a full community with private meetups with me and other members in the community as well. So if you want to be a part of that and get early access or behind the scene looks on how I run my businesses, this is definitely going to be a place where I can help you scale your collection and potentially start investing in other things outside of sneakers like real estate. So hit the link down below in the description and get signed up and I'll see you guys on the inside. Down us in my DNA, hey, hey, the hey, only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I would never let you down us in my DNA, the 